everybody, this is Two Beards in a Board Game and this guy. Today we are going to review Donner Dinner Party. Yeah, this game is, uh, let's see here. Probably should have prepped that before we started this video. Four to ten players. And it's made by... It's invented by Forest Prusen Creative. That's as much information as we got on that. Where did you buy this game from? Uh, Barnes Noble, I believe. We I get 20% off coupons all the time. We go to Barnes Noble and we buy games. Yep. So this game is another social deduction game where there's two teams, there's pioneers, and there's cannibals in you know light of the Donner Dinner Party. Mm -hmm. So you want to try to survive, and if you don't, you potentially start eating each other. Yeah, so it's... In the vein of uh, Hitler and stuff like that, you're going to pass out roll cards. Everybody has a secret roll. Some of the people are cannibals, want to eat the rest of the crew. The rest of them are pioneers, essentially just want to not be eaten. Right. They want to survive X number of rounds. X number of rounds, yes. Depending on the number of players you have. One of the really interesting things about this game is in most like werewolf or Hitler style games, at the end of every round someone is eliminated or something happens. This game has an option where every round everyone's dealt out supply cards or hunting cards and if you can get enough food together after everybody contributes one, somebody, uh, everyone might survive and so you just go straight to the next round. Right. So there is an option before having to deduce who might be kind of your enemy to just continue the game forward. Yeah, so you've got to like for the food option, everybody gets three hunting cards and then there's one camp leader that camp leader gets a hunting card and it's placed face down so you don't get to card, see yeah. what it is and everybody else gets to choose and there's only like four or five options uh, there's essentially feed two feed one nothing which is empty hands right. medicine and then poison there's medicine and poison so if you're a cannibal you can poison all of the food uh or if somebody put a medicine in it counteracts the poison right. so it's kind of a, a guessing game you know most of the pioneers just want to put in food right because if you're playing with let's say five people you need to get five food to survive the night without having to eat somebody now if the cannibal poisons it all that food goes away or if you just generally don't have enough that happens right then you lose yeah. that sometimes there's a yeah, the lot of basically vote someone off the island yeah you're voting speak. somebody off the island to eat and you know you've got a couple of minutes to decide to talk amongst yourselves right. about who you know you think is a cannibal and the cannibals are trying to Eat the pioneers, and the pioneers are trying to, I guess, eat the cannibals. We're, right. we're still eating people, yet we're not labeled cannibals at the end of that. Right, because it was a necessity at that point, rather that than is a true. want. That is true. Yeah. Uh, so, and then everybody, you know, you count down, everybody points at who they want to get rid of that game. Right. And yeah. if it's a cannibal, then good for the pioneers, and if it's a... a pioneer, what, then it's... What's it's, that ratio, though? There's a ratio in which, if it tilts to too many cannibals... It's if you end up with the same number of cannibals as pioneers, the cannibals instantly win okay, at so, the end of the round. So if you're playing with six people and you start you, with two cannibals. You get so if you get down to two pioneers, you knock out two people as the cannibals, they then win. the cannibals win. Yep. Yes. The pioneers have to kill all the cannibals to win. Yes. That's correct, right? Or get to the very end. Or get to the end, there's a nice seven little, rounds. Uh, little pan. There's a the nice marker. little pan marker, which I just flipped over and I'm not gonna be able to flip back, so the other interesting aspect with this game, it comes, each player gets dealt a supply card, so it can potentially change how a vote is done. You can you can also potentially add two food in. You can draw yeah. more cards, yeah. more hunting cards if you don't like what you see. Uh, there's a hatchet to where if you get killed, you actually kill the leader in response to, so two people right, die. So two so people die that it can add some mystery and chaos to the game more than just, I know what you are, sure. and I know what she is, and everything else, and it's a... It makes it not as much of a straightforward game as some other games are. Yes. Sure. That was something I really enjoyed is because sometimes in these social deduction games, everybody finds out it was you and you're the cannibal and the supply cards really throw a wrench in that. Like he said, there's a hatchet that automatically kills the camp mm -hmm. leader if you die. There's also a holy cross that means that no one can vote for you anyway in that round. Mm -hmm. And there's a few other cards that allow you to uh, change the result of the vote in some small way. Or that you can even bluff and say, well, I've got the hatchet in my supply, so oh, if right. I die, then the camp leader will I die. I did that one, we, yeah. We've done that before, too. And there's one other one where your vote counts twice. You get a point yeah. two times. And right. you can definitely sway a vote and 
depending on, say, like if a cannibal gets that, they can really sway a boat to kill a pioneer and set them right. in a really good position to win that game. Yeah, your wife did that to me yesterday. She did. She absolutely fact. got me killed, and I was a pioneer. But I think she might have been a cannibal in the end. So it sure. worked out for her. Uh, I will say, you know, one thing about this game is uh, people do get eliminated. They do have alternate rules that you can play with where a limited pe eliminated people get to flip their token over and become ghosts. And it's... I think it's a half-hearted attempt to try to keep people in the game because literally all you do is point at somebody and then their vote doesn't count. Right. So, I mean, it's it's okay. It at least keeps people in the game. All right. Right. So, if you're a ghost, it allows you to semi-stay in the game. You can't talk. You can make ghostly noises. Like, I was a ghost one time and I was in a woo right, doing right. stuff, you know, and... And you can cancel a vote. You point at them and you go, boo, so they don't vote. So you they scare them off vote. from that vote. So right. it's really only beneficial if one of the cannibals get killed and turned into a ghost because you Correct. can save the other cannibal potentially. Yeah. But depending on where the game is, that puts the target on them. So it doesn't add a whole lot to the game, so to speak. It's, it's yeah. I don't know. It, it It's... Uh, like in Werewolf, when you get eliminated, you're done until every until, right, until the game is done. You know, so I mean that's why we don't play a lot of games like that because we like to keep everybody involved all the time. So it's a quasi attempt to trying right. to keep people involved. It's something, I guess. It's something, and we have had. I remember one time we played, and I was a cannibal, and the other person was alive, and my removal of a vote actually killed a pioneer and ended up winning the game. So well, see, it's something go. that. So there's something there. And I remember that time, and I would I was overjoyed. It was one of my favorite moments of this game at all. All right, guys, what are you rating this, Charlie? Uh, it's it's I like the game. It's fun. It's it had some new aspects to it, but for me, it still just lacks that luster that secret you know secret Hitler sure. provides to us. Sure. So I am going to rate this a uh, five o'clock shadow. Oh wow! Okay, that's pretty low actually. Um, I on the other hand really enjoy this game. I like how the supply cards and the ghosts kind of throw a wrench in your normal social deduction. So I'm going to go straight Amish. Amish. Wow, okay. Uh, I'm going to go like right in the middle at, at like Manly on this one because it's a, it's, a, it's a good alternative to, you know, Secret Hitler, which we play a lot of. Uh, so, you know, it, it's there. It plays a lot of people. It's hard to find games that play a lot of people sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It seems like there are all these social deduction games now that play a lot of people or like Taboo or, you know, those kind of party right, games. Right, party games that you can have basically um, an infinite number of exactly. players based on teams and everything else. Exactly, but overall it's fun. You know, I don't think it's, I think it's pretty well balanced and, you know, you get to yell cannibal at somebody instead of oh, yes, know, Hitler or, or fascist, fascist or, or, yeah, so. or, you know, communist from Red Scare. But it's another one of those games. But I, yeah. I like it enough that we play it every once in a while and uh, it seems like it, you know, everybody enjoys it. So thanks for watching the video, guys. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you later. And remember, friends, don't eat your friends unless you want to.